Welcome to The Boiling Point. I'm with Gerald Blaine, Director of Sales for our Project Sales and Service Division. It's cold, freezing actually, and typically when that happens, there's a lot of companies out there that get curtailed and maybe have to have some type of a backup fuel. Um, there's some places that actually have one fuel, uh, maybe like natural gas or number two, and they maybe need a second fuel as a backup. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that people have been talking about is the liquid <coughs> natural gas. And I'd like to just maybe go over some things about what LNG is um, and, how, and maybe some of the differences. So, Yeah, it's, uh, we've been doing some research on this, trying to get comfortable with the product. A lot of times when you experience anything new, uh, it can be a little scary. You're not always sure if it's safe or not. Uh, the research we've done, it's a very safe product. Matter of fact, it may be the most safe fuel on the market. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a very high ignition point. It's uh, over 1,000 degrees, so you couldn't even light a fire with it with a cigarette. I mean, it's very, very safe. Mm. It's lighter than air, so if you have any spills, it dissipates very rapidly into the air. Mm -hmm. If you were to even, say, spill it uh, into water, mm -hmm. uh, it would dissipate on water, leave some ice in the background but it wouldn't have any kind of a catastrophic event from it. So it's really kind of unique to itself. Now if somebody's running natural gas, let's say, mm -hmm. and then they wanted to have LNG as a backup. Mm -hmm. well, what's, that, what's that process look like? How does the burner handle it? Um, you know, what do, they what do you actually have to do to do something like yeah, that? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's similar in, to propane in terms of storage. Okay. It has a, a more uh, similar BTU content when we end up vaporizing it over to the burner. Where a typical burner, when we're burning propane, we're gonna to have to change uh, some gas train regulator springs and so forth because of the amount of BTUs in a cubic foot. Mm -hmm. Where the BTU content in a uh, LNG cubic foot is gonna be real similar to natural gas. When we've done startups uh, on our systems, it functions just like natural gas. Mm. And, and truly it is, other than it's condensed at a very low temperature, it, but it's condensed at like 60 times what other compressed gases are. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's got unique storage capabilities. Uh, whenever you, when we finally convert it, um, it's actually a cleaner fuel than regular methane. Mm. It's the same product, but what we do is the facility will take the methane in, it will strip off some of the uh, uh, the nasty compounds of a normal methane. Mm -hmm. Natural gas in and of itself is fairly clean, but it mm -hmm. still has some things that can be cleaned up. And LNG takes it that step further to get that done. Right, why, now why would you do an LNG over, let's say, a number two fuel oil as a backup? Well, in, in our experience, our number two fuel oil customers that actually have that as a backup, more often than not, uh, they're not doing the things they need to do to keep the system operating and ready. Mm -hmm. uh, your number two oils, if you're not circulating properly and testing periodically, you'll end up cracking it, it'll water out, and it won't work when you need it. Mm -hmm. So it's not that it can't be a good backup, mm -hmm. but it takes a lot more attention. Right. Uh, where with an LNG or even a propane, uh, they tend to just take care of themselves and when you need it, it's there. Yeah, so when they're doing the LNG, uh, are they just putting a tank on site? I mean, what, what actually goes through the process if somebody wanted a backup, what is it that they need to do? Yeah, it, it'll be, if you have any experience with uh, number two oil or propane, it'll be similar. You're gonna have, uh, even though it dissipates very quickly, you're still gonna have containment fields. So depending on your size tank, you're gonna have to have some sort of safety containment, mm -hmm. uh, even though the odds are by the time it catches it, it's, it's going to be gone. Mm -hmm. um, and then depending on how many uh, hours or days of backup you need is going to determine you know, what your tank sizes are, the delivery loads, when they're triggered and so forth. And that, they're actually bringing it on site and filling up your tanks. So. Yeah, they're going to bring it in in a big tanker load. Uh, what they often do is they'll have some sort of telemetry system, a system that'll be uh, monitoring your tank on when they should come in and fill up. So it's kind of a seamless type of an operation. Right. What about um, just from a uh, from a cost standpoint? I mean, is there any type of a, of a savings um, at all? It's 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 like fuel in general. It all fluctuates to some degree. Uh, it's not necessarily something you're going to go after and say we can replace natural gas for it. Mm -hmm. Natural gas is readily piped in. Mm -hmm. It's economical. But in terms of uh, say a number two oil or even a propane. 
it's going to have a fairly significant impact on you, at least over time. There are times where they get kind of close in price, mm -hmm. but uh, if you look over about a 10-year period, which is what the research we did, uh, you're going to have a, a major savings. It has a very stable pricing point mm -hmm. versus oil spikes as well as propane spikes. Mm. So long term, it's, it's, it's very solid. Right. If you'd like to know a little bit more about LNG, there's a great video on YouTube. If you check it out right up here in this corner up here and type that in, you'll be able to see a little bit more about LNG. Now, Drill, we've been doing some research on LNG, um, as you talked about, but um, also there's a partnership that uh, you've been working on. Yeah, because of our customers, uh, so many using natural gas, having number two backup oil, or maybe just having oil and don't have a, a gas option. Uh, we've entered into a partnership. If you're interested in knowing more about it, you know, give us a call. We can help you uh, walk you through it, show you uh, what you're going to need to use that as a backup fuel or in some cases maybe even a primary fuel. Now as far as real quick, uh, wh why do you even need a backup fuel? Well, in a lot of cases, if you don't have a backup fuel, you're kind of subject to whatever the uh, gas company wants to charge you. Mm. And if you do have a backup fuel, at least you have a negotiating chip, or sometimes you get curtailed where you literally, they shut you off and say, go to your backup. Mm. So in those cases, you want to make sure you do have a reliable backup that you can get to. So many times with the, our oil customers, we get called in the middle of the night saying, hey, you got to get out here. We're mm. getting curtailed. Right. So. Right. That kind of a safety there to keep that production rolling. Right. So. All right. Well, appreciate you hanging out with us, Gerald, and we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.